Hey, this is Patrick Murphy Racy. I wanted to do a video that kind of catches up my use of the new uh, 7200. Uh, I wanted to do a video that catches people up on my sort of continued use of the new 7200 2.8 G Master 2 lens. It is phenomenal, man, and I just can't say enough good things about it. And I've selected a group of images that represent various types of photography that I do with the lens. And so um, I wanted to just kind of go through and talk about each one. Um, and I'm leaving open the photo mechanic window that shows you the shutter speed aperture, the film speed, and especially the focal length uh, so that it makes more sense. Uh, so first of all, action photography. It is phenomenally fast. Uh, basically, you really need to understand this lens is a miniature 400-2.8 or a 600-F4. The autofocus motors inside this lens are just ungodly quick and fast and deadly accurate. Um, so capturing stuff like this is no big deal. Um, again, this is at 200 millimeter. Uh, the last one was at 70. It uh, doesn't really matter what focal length you're at. You're going to find it incredibly sharp, wide open, no matter what. Uh, of course, as long as your shutter speed's high enough. That's one of my pet peeves. Um, and it's just a, a wonderful, joyful lens to work with because you can tell how fast it is while you're looking through the, the uh, especially the A1's viewfinder, just so quick. Even in a situation where it's low light, now I've lit this, but it was really dark in this gym, which is why I hauled in lights in the first place. But everything is just tack sharp. Everything on the player is perfect. Uh, the 7200 2.8 version GM is also able to give eye autofocus in a higher percentage of frames than the former lens. So in other words, it, it works much, much better giving you IAF. Uh, so when the A1 has an Alpha 1, when the Alpha 1 has da 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 pow, 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 pow. <clears throat> When the Alpha 1 has the 7200 II version lens attached, it's just the combination of those two pieces of equipment are able to give you the maximum IAF accuracy. So I see that. You can even get it in helmets, you know, behind helmets and face masks and stuff. So I just, I love working with this lens. It's so sharp. Everywhere you look, it's just, it's monstrous. Birds in flight. Um, Really, birds in flight, the more I shoot birds in flight, the more I realize how fast that action is. And when you want individual definition of, of feathers next to each other on a bird that's in flight with the wings moving, uh, again, you've got to have high shutter speed. Now, this is at 280 millimeter, which means this is a 1.4 extender on the lens at 200 millimeter. Note my shutter speed is 8,000th of a second at ISO 640. Some of you are going to go, ah, I don't want to use 640 in bright sunny day, but if you want sharp pictures, that's what you got to do. And note the eye is so sharp. Again, just, I mean, awesome picture. I mean, it, and the bokeh in the background is so pleasant, and it's easy to look at. It's easy on the eyes. So I really love the, um, the new 7200 2.8. It's just incredible. And you just work the light. You know, um, this is a full frame image. So this is, think about that. This is full frame. So it's, you know, pretty, pretty big deal. I just thought that was cute with the plane and stuff, whatever. Um, spoonbills, uh, you know, they're so ugly, they're beautiful, right? Um, but birds in flight, man, this is a big deal. And, and a huge market, market, a huge segment of society is now a big a big chunk of photography is being done now of birds in flight, and they're not being done by professionals. And so it's really exciting because there's no photo pass needed. Um, you don't have to pay anywhere to get there, maybe, if it's close by your house. And so people love to shoot birds, and I'm learning how to do that, too. It's really cool. And the 7200, I think my favorite combination is the 7200 with a 1.4 or even a 2X. It's a great way to shoot birds in flight. I mean, look at that. Just gorgeous colors. and But even the the, um, the nails on the claws are tack sharp. I mean, everything, the eye, all that stuff. It's just really neat. Again, this is at uh, 179 millimeters. So this is just shooting um, the 1.4 converter on the 7200 GM2. One of the really crazy things when they sent me this lens to test with before it was announced was how close it focuses. 
Um, Sony has mastered this process of, of using autofocus motors, two sets of them for two sets of lenses. So when you're, no matter where you're zoomed to or where you're focused at, you're going to have optimum edge to edge sharpness, no matter what, even when things get close. And so this picture is shot with a, with a two X converter on a 7,200 GM two, and you can get so close. This is wide open. Um, again, you got to keep your shutter speeds kind of high. Uh, I was on a monopod here, so I got away with 1250, but the, detail that is possible at minimum focus. I mean, there are times when even if I have a macro lens in my pocket, it's often easier just to use the zoom because it focuses so close. I mean, obviously it's not a macro lens, but you can get, you know, 50% of it there without even changing lenses. It's great. I just love the stamen in this picture and I don't know how good your screen is or whatever, but um, the, the stamen detail is so, it's just killer. This lens is so sharp. I mean, I'm, I'm just completely blown away. And, and this is a great example of looking at the bokeh and how um, specular highlights are rendered in the background and the foreground with the, with the droplets of water. It's just so cool. I, I love this picture. Um, sorry, but I do. Um, found some bees with this, you know, stalk in the foreground that didn't, you know, wasn't great. But um, just, again, minimum focus. This is 400 millimeter. Um, and I'm at minimum focus. I mean, it's, it's as close as I can get uh, without being out of focus because I'm too close. So just think about how close this is. And I finally got a couple of them without that stock in the foreground. This is out west in Colorado. Um, just the detail, the early morning light. It's just gorgeous, man. Um, the aspens in bloom. This is shot last fall uh, near Steamboat Springs. Uh, it's kind of a sad assignment. This was a, 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 a funeral for a police officer who was struck and killed in the interstate uh, doing his job. And um, I have a few pictures from this, but again, you know, minimum focus with a 200 millimeter lens. I guess that's a little out of order. Sorry about that. Back to Colorado. Just gorgeous. I think I really nailed peak color out there around Steamboat Springs last year. It was phenomenal. One of my favorites, just gorgeous. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. This is actually up in South Dakota um, and in the Badlands. And uh, it's incredible to be able to look directly into the sun. Now, if you look at my aperture, it's F4. So I'm shooting the lens with a 1.4 converter wide open at F4. And I'm at 10,000th of a second. That's what it took to resolve the sun. But to be able to look directly into the sun and get detail like this on the mountaintops and the clouds and everything, amazing. Again, eye autofocus on the Alpha 1 is second to none. It is just so sharp. It just takes your breath away sometimes how, how beautiful the pictures are. And even though the, the, um, the background is like pretty close to the behind this bird, it's just not that visually uh, upsetting. I mean, it's just the, the bokeh quality, uh, the autofocus quality of the backgrounds are just wonderful. This is at the Knoxville Zoo, and unfortunately you got the little specular highlights catch the chain link fence in there, which is unfortunate, but, um, but you can see how sharp it is, and you can also see how old and tired this tiger is. Um, but anyway, again, this is that police funeral. Um, you know, you're able to use tracking autofocus and hit one car as they're driving by. I, I obviously hit this car 406 in the foreground. And the background just goes off into a very nice, calm, easy, easy on the eyes autofocus look. It's great. Very sad, sad situation here. So obviously in a news gathering situation. Portraits. Um, the lens is fantastic to shoot portraits with. I love shooting this lens wide open. A lot of times when people put up lights, they're at f11, f16. I'm usually wide open or close to wide open. I just, I just love the look. I like the background going out of focus and I like nothing uh, messing with the, the sort of priority of the eyes. So IAF, human IAF on the Sony's is just phenomenal, man. It's great. And when you have a lens like this that gives you such sharp rendition, 
that just makes it all the better. This is at a wedding I shot out in Colorado. Um, this is lit, but it's 32 hundredths of a second, so I'm using high-speed sync. It's just so great to be able to just throw this lens on and just do whatever. This is at 200 millimeter. This is the new dean of the law school at the University of Tennessee. It was an assignment I had. Um, and it was really good because when I get this guy, I don't have him for very, very long. And the, the PR person that hired me to do this shoot is going to have to use these pictures of mine for a lot of different things. So you have limited time with the person, and then they are going to use the pictures to maximize. So what you have to do is you have to change things up really fast during the shoot to give different looks. So here's 104 millimeter. Here's 98 millimeter with me getting closer to him. Here's 178 millimeter. Um, here's 73 millimeter with a different professor. So it's just really cool to be able to just kind of change. This is a senior shoot that I did. Uh, a great girl, friend of our families. She's got more energy than 10 people I know. Um, and uh, again, the background out of focus, you know, I'm at 95 millimeters here at 2.8. It's just great. It's so sharp. And again, here in a, in a given situation, this is a 70 millimeter in this alley. Here's 90 millimeter um, and just a flick of my finger and I'm at a different focal length. And then 72 millimeter. And then 124 millimeter. It's just great to be able to like kind of zoom in and out and get the perfect framing in the in just split seconds of time. Um, and this is what's really cool about, you know, doing what I get to do is just, I love to work really fast and keep my quality really high. Here's 82 millimeter. And finally, one picture, just, just threw it in there because it technically is a portrait. Again, the Bird IAF is phenomenal. When you combine the Alpha 1, uh, and the new 7200 GM2. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I just wanted to do kind of an update. I've done lots of reviews of the lens, but it just seemed like a good time to do a bunch of images just showing pictures that I've shot since I did all those reviews. I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and please hit the subscribe button if you feel led. See ya.